What's up, guys? Welcome to another Critique the Community. I'm here with the world-famous Mike Kelly. And uh, today we're going to be doing fine art photography. Now, before we get into this critique, we're going to talk about the next critique because... If you guys are interested in getting your work critiqued, the very next one is going to be on product photography because we just did a tutorial with Brian Rogers that actually just got released today or yesterday, whenever you're seeing this. And so check out the link in the YouTube description to upload your best product photography pictures for that critique. Now let's talk about this critique. We're gonna be doing fine art photography. And the reason why we have Mike here today is because although you probably know Mike as an architectural photographer, You've been doing really well in the fine art world recently. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, for about, I don't know, maybe four or five years now, I've done a lot of uh, personal projects that have kind of, you know, skewed into the, into the fine art category. And I've had a lot of success with selling them and getting them shown in, uh, in museums and shows and, and things like that. So I think uh, it's something that's become more and more interesting to me as time progresses. And it's something that I really want to start pushing my career towards more of. Um, you know, as I get older and I start to experience a bit more uh, of the world, I, I love photographing it and showing it, especially uh, the commercial side of fine art photography. So it's something that I've really come to enjoy, and hopefully we get to see some uh, some awesome pictures today. And I'll say, I've seen some of Mike's works printed out and sold, and like he's killing it right now. So you're definitely somebody who should be able to critique fine art photography. I have uh, no real reason to be able to give my opinion on this. Well, no, no, no. I think uh, something that's so great about art is that it is, I think it's subjective to a point, and there are so many different styles that so many different people will like, but uh, the way I'll be critiquing it is, I'm not looking at it as, you know, wow, that's an extremely pretty picture. I don't think art needs to be pretty to make a statement, uh, but I do think that in order for a piece of art to be successful, it should do something more than just be a pretty picture. It should, it should say something about the world we live in, uh, it should teach me something, it should push the medium in some way, it should have you react in a way other than, wow, that's a pretty picture of a mountain or a landscape or whatever. I mean, anyone can go to, you know, any country and stick the tripod down and call it fine art, but from an art perspective, I'm really looking at things that challenge you and make you think as a person. I'm not thinking about any of that. I don't care <laughs> about any of that. Um, but here's what I do care about. I have a very particular style when it comes to things that I want to hang on my wall. And I don't like pretty landscape photos on my wall. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not saying this just because Mike is sitting here, but Mike's work, his aerial work, his black and white stuff, um, that is the type of stuff that I would hang on my wall. It's like graphical. It's not this just oversaturated pretty sunset picture. Mm -hmm. It's like this graphical image that it doesn't make me learn anything. It doesn't make me feel good about <laughs> the world we live in. It's, it's just like, man, that's a cool shot and, and, and it, it looks another, classy on my wall. The, the whole other side of fine art world is the commercial viability of the photos. So, you might be making work that is, you know, groundbreaking in terms of exposing a problem that the world is facing or teaching people amazing things, but will it sell? Will people buy it to put on their wall? And that's another facet that you have to consider is, uh, do you want to make art for uh, the interior design trade or something and sell art to people for them to put in their home as home decor? Or do you want to sell or make art that makes a statement that, you know, is going to change the world, so to say? So there's just this huge spectrum of, of where fine art can be. I'm going to look at it from kind of a both a statement point of view and a commercial point of view. Uh, Here's the problem with that, though. You would have to know the statement. You'd have to know the story behind the image, and we're not going to get any of that in this critique right now. That's why I think this is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what's going to happen. It's very difficult to critique a single photo. I always like to release right. my work in a series yes. because anyone can get lucky and take one great photo, but can you do it again and again and again and again? And, and, uh, and show the world that you're really capable of you know, telling a story or communicating something in a series of work rather than just one lucky shot. And I will also say this, I know everybody's like, hurry up and get to the pictures. <laughs> I will also say, using you as an example, I love your art, I would put it on my wall. However, if you showed me a single image of yours, I probably would not rate it that highly. And in many cases, I might even give it a two-star <laughs> rating. So the same image that I would say, it's two stars, it's not good enough for your portfolio, by itself, all of a sudden you put it in a series and you blow it up big. And, and it you... turns into a four or a five. Exactly. Yeah. So this is going to be very, very tough. 
Uh, let's go ahead and get to it. No hard feelings to anyone. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully none. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, final thing. I'm sorry. Remember, somebody gets a free tutorial. You can get one of Mike's tutorials or any other tutorial that you might want. Pick a number, and when we get to that number, they'll get a free tutorial. Seven. Seven. Okay, this is number one. Let's rate this one. All right. Is there more to it, or is that it? I think that's it. Okay. And what is it? Is that a, like a pulpit in a church, or is that like it a It looks like a... Fountain? like a um, like a plinth or something on a street. Like I see, it looks like a concrete. Yeah, it could be a fountain. It could be something. Uh, all right, you're ready? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's the story, Mike? What does it mean? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we got to investigate critically. Three, two, one. <laughs> you gave it two, I gave it one. So I, I don't know what this is. I know I don't want something like this hanging on my wall. It just looks like a dark void to me. I think it, 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 it shows some kind of intention. The photographer was thinking maybe he wanted to go for a minimal thing. He's using a lot of negative space. I think as it is, it's not enough to be a, you know, a portfolio piece or a, a part of a series, but it, and it does show some sort of thinking and intention. He lit it a certain way to get it really moody and graphic, and for that effort, I'll give it a two, which so I, I think that it needs work, right? So I think to bring it yeah. to a three, four, or a five, it needs to be expanded and refined, and a little more digging has to happen before it really... Uh, yeah. becomes a full-fledged piece. Potentially, my one-star rating is not fair because yeah. that is that is supposed to be a snapshot. Right. And if this is lit from the sides, then it's not and a snapshot. Composed perfectly in the middle. and Something on and on. was thought of. So uh, potentially, I need to change mine to a two for that reason alone. But let's move on to the next shot. So I was afraid that there was going to be pictures like this in here. I don't consider this to be fine art, but let's go. Okay. Maybe you do. Three, two, one. Two stars. If we agree here, this needs work before it hits your portfolio. I think it needs work before it hits your portfolio as like a commercial photographer. And then I would just say this is not fine art. Like people are not going to buy this and put it on their wall. Right. That's So, yeah, I don't think it's commercially viable as art. I mean, maybe with work it could be a commercial, like some kind of advertising or something. Um, but I think, again, the concept needs fleshing out. I've seen a lot of... Uh, but again, it's not... It's not. It's like it shows there's intent to improve. But I think a lot of the thing... The first thing that a lot of photographers do the, to dip a toe into the fine art world is they kind of do these moody sort of, you know, lonely girl in a forest, lonely girl on the road. Train There's tracks. A book. Yeah, train tracks. Not not necessarily like senior portraits, but like <clears throat> this, you know, moody person is alone, dark emotion type of thing. And it, it, it's like just a, on a very base level, it shows that you're thinking about concept, but it really needs to be pushed beyond that to have any kind of impact. Next up. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> this is... This is not fine art at all. I don't even know what this is. This is like <laughs> cosplay dragons. Okay. <laughs> like I don't I don't even know how to rate these. <laughs> Three, two, one. Two stars, like I don't I don't know what to say. This not is a not snapshot. Fine art. There's clearly work and intent put into it. Not sure. so much fine art. It's almost it's almost like a like a cosplay. Is that is that what it would be considered? Yeah. yeah. Um I'll, however like, if you're into that fantasy sort of thing, uh, if you're into Magic the Gathering and D&D, &D and I don't know you, what this you character are, is. You are, so why don't you, I am. <laughs> why don't you speak from personal Yeah, belief. I can see the interest there. And again, yeah. there was an intent, but I don't think that makes it art, necessarily. It could be... Uh, if you're a big enough nerd like you, though, <laughs> if you play the Yu-Gi-Oh cards I and the, the, the Pokemons, -Oh. maybe this becomes your art. Not for me particularly. Again, I think. What it's, did you play? I, a cosplay or something. I think this is. It's a cool. No, what portrait. was the game that you played? Magic the Gathering. Oh, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I think it's a very. It's a cool portrait. It's a cool environmental portrait of a cosplayer. Doesn't necessarily. Oh, it's a well. It's a very well done cosplay shot. Right. I just can't write it as. Fine art. Fine art. Let's move on. What is going on here, David? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? This is what you had to work with? <laughs> I don't want to laugh at anyone on camera. I'm going to compose myself and you can edit this out. <laughs> David's not editing any of this out. Are you ready? Oh. We're all going to hell. Okay. Three, two, one. How can you give this two stars? This As is definitely an architectural one star. photographer, I'm biased. 
There was thought put into the composition. Really? Yes. The vertical lines are vertical. <laughs> oh come on. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna start telling people they did a good no. job taking a picture of a building because the vertical I didn't lines say, are straight. I said it needs work. That's what a two is, and it needs work. <laughs> there needs to be a concept. There needs to be more thought put into it. It, you know, I don't know where it is. Terrace, like I don't. I mean, I uh, it's it's almost to be honest, it's more of a, like a vacation snapshot. Is that what you're thinking of? Um, what I'm thinking of is like. I am a restaurant owner who doesn't know much about photography, and I'm like, hey, uh, Becky, who's a server, like, go out and get a shot because we have, like, a lot of people sitting out here, yeah. and they're going to throw this on their Yelp page right. or whatever. For any kind of art, though, I think, it, I think it needs work. I think it needs, you know, color correction and color grading, and it needs, you know, concept and theory and everything. Uh, so you, you could, I th between one and two, potentially. Okay. Not fine art. Yeah, not fine art. <laughs> can you imagine if you went into like an art gallery and this was all... the truth is with modern art, I can't imagine that. <laughs> and like... it'd be for sale for ten million dollars. Maybe this is a little bit more fine arty. Alright. As you can tell by the goofy smile on Mike's face, this is one of his photographs. But what Mike doesn't realize is that I know this is one of his photographs. Maybe right, that's I mean, a little bit more fine art. What do you mean? Well, you'll see. All right. Three, two, one. A you snapshot? Dude, <laughs> this, is, this is the definition of a snapshot. This is send my drone up into the air, point the camera straight <laughs> down, and boom, here's this picture of these crappy looking boats, and I'm going to make it black and white, and I'm going to pretend to be an artist. Like, this is, this is, this is at least equivalent to, you know, the other ones that I've given. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I think there was uh, composition with thought put into it. Uh, I think it's graphic. It's like exactly what you said you put on your wall, and now you're calling it a one. It's graphic. <laughs> there's shape to it. There's form. There's negative space. Yeah. It, it, there's the, the subject matter interests you. I know you love boats. I know you love going out. Yeah. Uh, but I think on the whole, uh, I think it, 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 as part of the series, it'd be a great shot. Alone, I don't think it's strong enough to be a very strong fine art image, but this is exactly the kind of thing that I could see someone putting on their wall. I just feel like a photographer could have like thrown their camera up in the air and then cropped it to look like that, and that, that's now, what, it. What if what if this was like a no-fly zone for a drone and someone took that out of a helicopter? Um, you know, then, then they then they all? wasted a lot of money, <laughs> but like that would be ridiculous. Like who would do that? I don't know. <laughs> some, some idiot. <laughs> Jesus. I know this is your shot. I know. <laughs> you guys are so mean to me. I'm trying to be honest. Like, yeah, I think it's pretty good, but it's not my strongest. <laughs> no, I know it's your shot. We, we set you up on that one. I told David to, to tell you, like, we're going to sneak your picture in there, but we, I knew it was yours all along. So I, my, my heart started pumping when I saw that, and I was like, did I play this off or what? Uh, so, no, critiquing myself, honestly, yeah, I think it's a three. I think, uh, like you said, it's graphic, it's you know, the black and white, it's strong compositionally. I think the subject matter to the right person is very interesting. Uh, I think it's a good decor piece for a home. I think it's commercial fine art. I, do I think it's world changing? Do I think it's going to change anyone's opinion of photography? Do I think it changes the medium? No. I'm being honest. I think it's. I think it. I don't think it needs work. I think it fits as part of the series. I don't think it's a snapshot. I don't think it's an amazing shot. It's not. I don't think it's my portfolio. But I do, I do know that it's in one of my books. It's in, I did a whole um, book about aerial photos of L.A. I know I snuck it in there because it, as a part of a body of work, I think it adds to it. Um, I agree with everything you said. Um, and this is, this is one of these shots that I feel like if somebody showed this to me and said, Hey, Lee, should this be in my portfolio? I'd say, no, don't put that in your portfolio. Are you crazy? But when I see it in your art book yeah. and when I see it printed large and hung on a wall, right. I'm like, that looks awesome. I really like it. It's uh, it's just a interesting image that's more about shapes and density than it is about a story or look at this pretty boat at sunset, like so many other boat shots are. Yeah. So, um, again, if maybe I would give it a three star as well. It's, not, it's, it's solid, well, yeah. but it fits so well with all your other pictures. Right. That like, it's great for what it is. Yeah. All right, we agree. What is going on? David. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> One, two, three. 
I'm like, this is the lowest I've ever rated pictures before. And I don't know if it's because of the genre or because I don't like the pictures. No, I think it's a lot of it. It's just, um, it needs work. It's someone is trying to think about a concept that at a base level, they're thinking outside the box of this. Let's shoot a snapshot. It's more of let's make a still life scene and see if we can make something interesting out of it. I mean, I think obviously that's, it's good that their brain is working in that direction, but it just, you need to practice day in and day out over and over and over. It's like the first time you pick up a guitar. You're horrible. All right. Well, a month let's later, be you're specific. Somewhere. Let's be specific. Sure. What could they do here? Okay. If you did, you know, 300 of those and you spent weeks and weeks and weeks uh, melt, like melding all different kinds of fruit together and did a series of it on a white background or something, maybe the staples, I, I, I find the staples a little bit cliche. I think if you did very graphic shots of half an apple and half an orange and you work the colors in a graphic way on, say, a white background or a solid gray background, it could be a very interesting graphic series. I know uh, a photographer, all that she does is eggs on plates. Now, that sounds insanely boring, but she uses these crazy colors. It's super minimal, it's super clean, and she's, like, huge on Instagram with, like, th like tens of thousands, maybe 80,000 followers or something. Uh -huh. And it's just the simplest concept done over and over and over, and she's got so good at it that she's amassed this huge following. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure she has a book of eggs on plates. It's kind of interesting. And I think this is similar to that. It could be very minimal, very interesting. The concept has to be fleshed out. A series has to be made out of it. And I think the, the setting has to be changed a bit. So this is something you can spend months on, do it in a studio, realize the concept in a more engaging way. Then you can have something interesting. I don't mind the concept or this idea at all. Mm -hmm. I just feel like this image looks like a snapshot to me. I mean... If you're if you if I were trying to take a picture of I I, I love shallow depth of field but if I was trying to pick, take a picture of fruit and half and half yeah. I wouldn't focus on like just the front and have the stem go out of focus like it just seems weird to me and then the fact that you know the photographer is kind of shooting down on this a little bit it almost just looks like it feels like a snapshot yeah. for so many reasons the lighting the composition the the direction the angle that this was actually yeah. shot rather than getting See, low and I didn't shooting. think about any of that all I thought about was the subject and the concept of the subject and like yeah, you I, said shallow depth of field I don't even own a lens faster than f4 so yeah. to me that was kind of you know that's the first thing that your mind goes to and I'm like how can we as an artist realize a, a full-fledged concept out of this you know half-baked idea What's your point? That my suggestion was pointless and no, yours no, it's was just you're deep coming at it from and... a different angle, which is interesting because okay. you immediately thought tech, I thought concept. All right, so I was right and you were wrong. Next image. <laughs> um, I I expected this to be hard, but this is like I don't I don't even know how to rate these. <laughs> now, now we flip. <laughs> now we flip. So. Um, the reason why I didn't give this a one, I feel like there's something happening here with composition that feels like a little more than a snapshot to me. Yeah. But I am not offended by your one. I am not offended. I think it's a perfectly pleasant snapshot. Yeah. Uh, and again, there are fine art photographers who have shot flowers for their entire career. I know. And they're doing it in a very artistic way. They're well, doing it something with lighting or something with yes. time of day or seasons or something crazy. And it's a project that they realize over the course of years. Whereas this is kind of like, it's a technically nice photo. It's in focus, most of it. Um, and, you know, it's exposed well. But it doesn't tell me anything about art or say anything to me that interests me really in any way other than, oh, it's a flower that I saw on the trail and I stopped and took a picture. I don't think you're going to sell this unless you have some insane name behind you. Yeah. I don't think you're going to put this in a gallery and sell it for thousands of dollars, no matter how large and fancy you print it. Yeah. Next. All right. This is number seven. So congratulations to whoever took this shot. You get a free tutorial. Any well, tutorial you want, right? Yeah. Yeah. You would be wise to choose one by Mike Kelly. <laughs> Only if you're obsessed with shooting things that don't move. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Do you need to see it again? Yes. Okay, I'm good. What do I rate this? I can't tell you, man. You gotta make the decision for yourself. Three, two, one. Two stars needs work. Um, maybe this is kind of artistic fine I art, think, but... Yeah, I, 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 again, like I said, there are people who have made a career out of doing fine art nudes 
or implied mood or whatever we're going to call this. Uh, and it's they're graphic. They're interesting. The light is interesting. It's almost more like bodyscapes than yes. Than, and I'm a big I'm a big fan of those. I yeah. I like those. Right, and it makes you think outside of you know. It's like what is this? Is it is it sand dunes in the desert? Is it a, an aerial of a forest or something? And it's a, a human body, and I think that's amazing. Yes. Um, and for this, it's very uh, uh, surface level uh, in terms of here's a picture of a human being in black and white. It doesn't make me think beyond that at all. Yeah, I, 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 the the direction of the lighting and stuff I find interesting. I am not a fan of the post processing. I think it's a little overdone. And uh, what's going on here? If only you had an iPad. I want to zoom in. All what, right. What are you trying to zoom in on? That's the question. <laughs> I just want to see the retouching. There we go. I don't know why it's not working. But I feel like it's just over retouched. Her skin looks really fake. And then the um, the lighting on her face, I just feel like it's blown out. Yeah, there's some kind of like highlight transition that's uh It's a little harsh to me. Yeah. So um you know, if you if you own like a boudoir company or something, like maybe this should be in your portfolio yeah. then. Right. But fine art, not feeling it, not feeling it. Next up. Oh, here we go. So can you tell what this is? No. And I like it. I like it as well. We shouldn't be saying stuff like that, though. What do you mean I shouldn't be saying I like it? Well, before we rate it. Oh, okay. Let me see it again. Get my rating in order. Okay, that's cool. I can't say that. Though, no, can you I? can't say that. What is three, technically? Three is solid for your portfolio. Four okay. is excellent. Five is world class. Okay. And five is like, how do you even rate a five with fine art photography, you know? Oh, I could very easily do it. Really? Ready? All right. Three, two, one. Give it th I, I, I'm three and a half. That's All a, right. That's a well, half. if you give it three and I give it four, that's three and a half. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at here, but this is like really pretty and it, it just, it feels like... I'm trying to put it into words. But I love the color palette. It's something that you would you could hang and look at and come back to over and over and over. Yeah, and you and could I, like design like a room around it. Yeah, and yeah, <clears throat> totally. And I don't know if this is you know like one of those aerials from Iceland with the 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 braided glacial rivers or something, or if this is like a macro shot of a, a piece of agate with cinnamon on it. Or it's just really cool. I'm not sure what it is, and I like it. It's like a the it's like this organic sort of um, natural. I just I think it's really pretty. Uh, the colors are great. The uh, the composition is some is, is definitely interesting. Yeah. Um, it works. It's not doesn't feel unbalanced or lopsided to me. It's almost like a an abstract painting in that way. Yeah, and for those reasons, I really like it. I don't know. There's much else we can say because we don't know what it is, but it's really nice. Maybe I should buy a print of that. Do you remember when we were photographing that really expensive house in Venice Beach that we had to pay all that money to shoot? Yeah. And the owner of that house had black and white pictures that were super simple. Yeah. Kind of yeah, like they were this. Like Edward Weston. You see, exactly. Yeah. You know who did it. Yeah. I don't I don't know anything about like any of these. But like my point is with a shot like this, if Edward it's, it's, Weston it's, took it. Potentially, yeah. It would it, it, yeah. I, I think uh it could be world class if he took it. If I took it, it's like, oh, it's a mistake. Like I didn't mean to hit the picture button it's like when you're I was... walking down the streets and like you bumped the shutter and that was there exactly but it's really pretty three two one you give it a three i, I give it a three two i i i cannot go that high on this i just i if you <laughs> know what that is and say you bought that in italy or in spain or on some vacation somewhere and it i think you know if you knew where that was you would have more of a connection to it and i think as a series this could be a nice photo. I would agree with that. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. It's just so soft and you know, I would imagine this was taken on film like you can see all these like specks and everything on it. And maybe that's the maybe that's the, the goal. Aesthetic. And that yeah. this this is the type of image that I thought we were going to be reviewing a lot during yeah. this critique and I was worried that like man David how, threw us a curveball. How do you critique this stuff? Because yeah, if a famous photographer took it, it's incredible. And then if, you know, I, if my camera accidentally took the shot when I was trying to 
check a picture. And another thing it's a mistake. To, to keep in mind is, yeah, honestly, the more you grow as a photographer, the more people will respect your work and what you're trying to say. So, yeah, that's very true that, like, what... I don't want to say what might be one man's snapshot is another man's masterpiece, but uh, there's definitely something to be said for your pedigree in the art world, if you will. Yeah. As, it's, as it's crazy as that bullshit. may be. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, I watched that movie you recommended. What was it called? Oh, uh, uh, God, what was that called? It's on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, and it's on the fine art industry yeah. and especially like modern art. Yeah, modern art. And how they... they Fix the prices and, yeah, and everything. It's just crazy. It, it makes me mad. And it also makes me think I need to become a modern artist <laughs> art because that is where that money is. Yeah. All right, next up. Interesting. Okay. You good? Yeah. Three, two, one. All right, so I gave this a three. And, and the reason why I gave this a three is because although this obviously isn't the type of thing I personally would want to hang on my wall, there's something about this that's more than just, you know, some guy in hell getting burnt or whatever whatever you might assume this is a mm -hmm. picture of. Mm -hmm. And so it feels much more artistic to me yep. than, a, than another shot that I'm sure we've seen that's similar to this. I think the, uh, the pain and suffering... The, not the artificial pain and suffering theme, is a little bit cliche. Uh, I think, however, the concept is like an it's like a electroluminescent wire or something. I think there's potential there. I could be convinced to go to a three on this. Um, I think the the technique has some potential to be very interesting. Again, in a series used with dancers or with actors or something cool like this or with paint, it's almost like a blue man group kind of thing. Uh, so I think. The idea now I'm going to give it a two, now that potential. you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't like this particular execution of the technique, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. I mean, it's not my style either. Yeah. I, I don't... And you heard me just bring my, my own worldview into it. Like, I, I, I said, I don't like, but that could be another man's... Right. They, they might love it, you know what I mean? So That's why I was a little bit more lenient on this one. All right, next up. Um, I do not know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Okay, that's uh, really interesting. All right. I, like, I feel like this is almost like an illustration that would be in a kid's yes. book or something. Well, I'm putting my my tastes aside, and I think that this um, could, like you said, it could be more of an illustration. Uh, it could be, um, you know, like a very popular piece on something like DeviantArt or something like that. Yeah. Online, uh, I think the technique is pretty solid. I. You know, I, it, it doesn't. I'm not blown away by it. I think it's a cool photo. Do I think that it is fine art? Not necessarily. I think it's interesting. I think it's pretty cool in the right context. Right, and that's the thing. I like. I look at this, and my first initial reaction is like, "This is ridiculous. The Photoshop isn't even that good. Like, <laughs> yeah. what did they do with the stars? Right. Like, this is so silly." But this could be like a Half Life Two cover or something. Yeah. You know then I, mean? I start like thinking gaming. like, yeah, but kind of cool. There's something interesting about it, and it certainly sucks you in. And right. you know, I've you know I've read sci-fi books and exactly. children's books before where you'll see illustrations like this, and I, you remember them your whole life. Yeah. Right. So something about this made me give it a three. I think it's cool concept art. That's my uh, that's my conclusion. I, I mean, think it's well executed. So it's, it's pretty cool it's, concept it's, art. Yeah, and what do you consider that to be? You know, uh, storyboard art for sci-fi, exactly. For books for, and uh, and and I think it succeeded there. But again, as you said twenty minutes ago, with Magic: The Gathering, one man's concept art is another man's fine art. And I've been thinking go. about that. So you're onto something. Okay. Someone might want to buy that if that was relevant to their interests. Cool.
Ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Whoa. What is going on? I think in the last critique, there was a Stonehenge shot. Yeah. And Patrick rated it, like, way higher than me, too. And, uh... Uh, this I don't know. Reminds me of a Peter Lick photo. Let me let me tell you a little Peter Lick story. And now I I am not going to get into my thoughts on Peter Lick, but I know that a lot of people like it and a oh. lot of people hate it. Yeah, they do. I like I like his work, but I will say this about Peter Lick's work. I hate his work. I really like his work. <laughs> if you go on Peter Lick's website yeah. and you look at his pictures, he he always has them really small, maybe so people can't copy them or something. They look particularly bad. Yeah. They look like Flickr stream of the week yes. or whatever. Yes. And, and they look like HDR-ish at times, and they look oversaturated. It looks like over-processed mm -hmm. garbage to me. When you go into his studio, and you see those things printed the size of this whole wall, yeah. lit perfectly in those gorgeous frames and everything, all those problems that I had when it was small, like the... The, the perceived halos of the HDR that I thought I could see on this computer completely go away when it's printed large. And and so this could be one of these type of shots that the second you print it... It's amazing. It's amazing. And you, you are blown away by it. And I, I think if that's... I mean, obviously it's Photoshopped, but if, uh, if that is a real... Uh, condition of the way the st if the stars are really there in the Milky Way. I know you can photograph the Milky Way like that, and now you, can, you know you can get Stonehenge to look like that. If you can get that in one say one night of photography, and the Milky Way is actually there and Stonehenge is actually there, I think that's amazing. If it's a complete Photoshop composite, I'm not so on board. With Why that. does it matter? Let's see if you can answer because this question. Because that would take extreme skill to be there at the right time of year, the right time of day, have the right knowledge to put it together and the right amount of luck and patience to pull that off. I think that's impressive. I think anyone can grab a stock photo of some stars and a stock photo of Stonehenge and mash it together in Photoshop in 20 minutes and come up with that. I but know. But if you do it the real but way, that's impressive. But, but, what, but you're not saying do it the real way. The real, okay, so you set up a camera for eight hours and you capture from a tripod yes. Stonehenge at sunset. The sun goes down behind it. The Milky Way comes up. You're still capturing. The camera never moves. And you put those real elements together. They were really there. I think that's pretty cool. That's the exact concept of all my air portrait work or of what Elia Licardi does with his thing. When he captures three hours worth of time changing and you put it together, I think that's impressive. But I think if you just grab, if you go on a stock photo website and grab Milky Way and grab a Stonehenge and put them together, ah, you lose me. It's lame. I agree. But there's levels of lame. <laughs> of course. And so, like, if you could get it all perfect in camera, yeah. that's the pinnacle, right? And if you can composite it, but you were really well, there, that's again, a little better. And then, but compositing, a worse. that could be seen as pushing the medium in a certain way. And that's pretty cool when it comes to fine art. Like, you're experimenting, doing something more than just still photography. And there are people who do just still photography, and that's also very, obviously very interesting, too. But uh, I think if you're able to, again, that's, to me, pushing the boundaries of what is possible with photography, I think that's very cool, if it's real. And by, I mean real. I, I just, I look at the Stonehenge and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. Why is yeah. there this like halo coming out of the middle of it? Was yeah. that taken at sunset or something? And then what is this haze across the entire thing? To me, it seems like kind of a lazy photographer. You're like, yeah, I just want to drop this we will see. Photoshop sky curious in there. I'm the comments in, in the uh, All right, yeah. Tell, us, tell us how you did it and uh, let us know how real it is. Okay. Hold on, let me see that again. Is that the Double Tree logo? <laughs> On the pin? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Three, two, one. To me, this feels like a clear two stars needs work. Yes. Love the concept. Yep. Love the work that was put in to making this heart. Absolutely. Like obviously, there's a lot of thought and uh, just work that went in. You need to keep exploring the concept to make something really amazing. I agree. I don't like. I don't really like the lighting. I don't like the fact that the papers are on total black. It should be like on a desk or something. Yeah. I don't like the fact that the papers are going yellow. That's really weird. Like, imagine if, if you know, it would be so freaking cool if someone wrote out pages and pages and pages of sheet music, and then zoomed out and you saw this like three hundred page sheet music, and it was like this. This it turned into at you know at size this drawing of some crazy intricate scene. 
but at, on a micro level you couldn't tell until you zoomed out and you saw how all these notes and you know arpeggios and whatever made this really interesting shaded drawing and and maybe you could even play the song like that would be super cool and there you could be like there's, you know what i mean so i think there's the concept here it well, what be, it would be like a video or something no say not necessarily so like it's uh maybe there's uh they make a book and every page is a piece of sheet music and then the last page is a zoomed out photo of all the sheet music arranged in such a way to draw a picture or something like that hmm. that could be very cool all right so whoever shot this just do that and mike will give it I will, Two and a half I, stars. I would absolutely buy that book. <laughs> okay. Would you? That'd be really cool. Uh, no, I w no. there's no way I'd ever buy if, that book. Um, but <laughs> If you're going to do this, uh, find a fancier pen. Right. It <laughs> needs to be like a fountain pen. So the concept is there. The execution just needs cleaning up. Yeah. yeah. But I admire the work that's put into it. This is playing with my biases here. Yeah, Mike's Mike's wanting to give this six stars. It's just a, <laughs> it's a five star scale, no sixes. <clears throat> three two one i gave it four i love this i think it's very cool i don't i don't know what's going on it looks like a double exposure I mean, multiple it, it, exposures oh yeah there's a lot there's something? a lot like look at how many noses there are i think it's super cool uh i think it's just multiple exposures of an airplane and this is something if it was executed in a more refined way, I could totally see putting on my wall. But I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff, as you know. I love it. I feel like this is, you know, a plane, like you could be into planes or not. Yep. And still love the color right. and the composition. It just feels like this abstract painting. But then when you look close, you're like, yep. oh, man, there's more to it than that. So uh, something about this really stands out I, to me. I definitely, I think it's really cool. I'd love to see, I'd love to know more about what the photographer's intention was here. Is this uh, multiple exposures of the same plane, of multiple planes? Is there a certain um, significance to the angle of flight? Are they landing? Are they taking off? Et cetera. I think it's really cool. Next up. Yep. I've seen a lot of pictures like this recently. A lot of recently. these pictures, yeah. And uh, when they first started coming out, I was like, oh, incredible, four or five stars every single time. Now I've been seeing a lot of them, and I'm like, okay, everybody, I don't know if everybody's copying each other, or it's like trendy right now. So I don't, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Three, two, one. Three, what, were you, three. what were you thinking about? I was between two and three. Okay. I was between three and four. Okay. Um, I think th there's, this is definitely a trend in photography right now. The long exposure, black and white, highly stylized, dodged and burned sort of. With the, with the wacky long exposure sky. Yeah. Um, the comp like, it's a pleasing composition. Would you put this on your wall? Yes. You would? I would. Would you could just that in a museum? You know, museums... Could you see 30 of those in a museum? Any museum th as a series. You know what? Most of the stuff that's in art museums... You, you go, like, you scratch your head and you want I it. don't scratch my head. I want to, like, put my wall, <laughs> my <laughs> hand through, the, through the, the painting because it's so stupid. There's a guy... I'm pretty sure his name's Robert Morris. That's my, my name. Robert Lee Morris is my name. I'm pretty sure his name is Robert Morris. I went to the MoMA in, in yeah. Manhattan. Yeah. And he had literally taken a sheet of paper and drawn a single squiggly line with a pencil. And he made it into MoMA. And I'm like, kill me now. <laughs> He's commentating on your anger. And that's why it's in the MoMA. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's what they all say. Like, yeah, but look at, look at the emotion you, you that he's reaction. brought out. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the greatest art in the world. <laughs> no, I'm not falling for it. So if this photographer became the guy, the Mike Kelly, of black and white buildings, then yes, I certainly could see this in the Smithsonian in the future. But it all has to do with like how famous is that photographer? Or, like how many other photographers are copying this exact same thing? You yeah, know? Yeah. I think they are cool and fun to look at, kind of like visual candy. But I, but I'm not convinced that it is fine art. And you can argue until you're blue in the face about art is completely subjective. Blah 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 blah. Uh, but I'm not convinced that that is. Fine art. I think it's a cool photograph with interesting techniques, but I don't. It doesn't get me to react in any way. It doesn't commentate on anything. 
Uh, there's not, I don't think there's any significance to the building. It's a very cool photographic experimentation to me, which I think is cool and has merit, but I don't, I would not consider it fine art. Why? Uh, because I, do you re react to that in any sort of way? Does it, does Stop it... Stop this reaction No, I'm stuff. serious, like... Oh my gosh. Not, not just necessarily like ridiculous. shock and awe or reaction how do you, that way. How do like... you react to your pictures of a, some boats on the ground? Like, come on, like, there's no reaction. <laughs> it's just a cool shot or it's not a cool shot. It's that, you don't react. I, I, I was honest on my own critique. I said, on its own, I don't think it's the strongest picture. When you put that together with 150 other shots of LA shot in the same way, that's very interesting. It's the graphic, interesting things that you don't think about. We think about L.A., which is, let's be honest, an ugly city from the ground. Okay, so why can't somebody shoot a graphical image of the city from ground level? Okay, they could if they did a whole book of them. Let's see it. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so wait, you're saying that if this You're was doing in that a series, thing that you do, yeah. What do I, what do you, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to understand uh, how wrong you are. So if this <laughs> was in a series, then if, it would be fine art. If he was the first photographer to do it, Absolutely. Or one now, of the... now is is that fair? You have to be the first to do it before it's fine Not art. Not the first. I think you need to be. Is this the first time you've seen this? You no, admitted but you've seen it thousands of times. Right? No, but maybe who, the guy who took this is the guy who on F Stoppers two years ago was the first time I saw this. Could be. I don't know. I, I, in, in that case, you know, I I think, I think that's. I could see an argument for that being, you know. It is, effect it, is, it is affecting the genre in some way. He's breaking new photographic ground, whether in Photoshop or with the camera. I don't, I don't know what the technique is, honestly. Like, I've seen it a lot. I'm going to take a crack at it. I think it's a long exposure with, like, a 10-stop ND filter and then black and white and dodging and burning in Photoshop. Um, if I'm hilariously wrong, someone can tell me. Maybe it's, like, infrared, black and white. I'm not really sure. Um, but I think if it is the guy, that's very cool. If it is, you know something that's been done over and over and over uh i'm not as impressed but um yeah i mean you could be right maybe i'm being too harsh but i would like to see you know your your main problem with this though is that you feel like it's a trendy technique that it's currently overused yes okay now and you started your plane series of all the planes taking off those have gone viral tons yeah. of times now yeah. so everybody's seen them right. but there's a lot of copycats out there now and doing honestly that. i didn't even know this i wasn't the first one to do that oh it came to light. however um I, I was not the first one to do that technique but i think the reason that mine was successful it's not successful to me anymore not successful anymore nope uh the composition the you know Putting multiple fo planes in one photo, I wasn't the first guy to do that. I was the first guy to be crazy enough to do it out there for eight hours an entire day mm -hmm. and put it all together. Uh, I was the first one to successfully market it, really, as a fine art piece, which is a whole other part of this equation we haven't really touched on yet, the marketability of a piece. Yeah. Um, and there's so many factors that go into why it was successful. Uh, so, no, you make a point, um, but I, I was not the first one to put more than one plane in one, in one image. That's the other thing. But was I the first one to make a story around the image that was interesting enough that it became this viral sensation, that it became this artistic sensation? That's another part of art photography that we haven't even considered yet. <sighs> That's what I hate about art, though. I hate the, like, popularity contest. Like, yeah, the picture sucks, but <laughs> I got it out there and so many people saw it that now it's priceless. You know what I mean? Like, no, it should it should be able to stand well, on its you, own. Can you find an example? I know you hate my picture. Can you find an example where the picture truly sucks, that it was just got out there and it was force-fed to the public enough that it became popular? Yes. Such as? Tons of, of uh, modern artists. I mean, you look at, you look at all the stuff that, that Banksy's doing, like... That I thought stuff, you loved Banksy. I, I, I like some stuff. It's like clever stuff, but the idea yeah. that it's priceless art, it's ridiculous. It's like it's right. like funny little icons that he's drawing or whatever. Or who who's the guy? Who's the Campbell Soup guy? Warhol. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Like yeah. all that's it's ridiculous. But again, he was the first one to do that. I don't. I, one of the dude, first ones. I could be the he first guy to take a dump on your face right now. <laughs> and if you and, use that. You know, that could be some crazy weird offspring of performance, off, offshoot, offspring, offshoot of performance art 
You know what I mean? Are you ready to do this, Mike? Let's, how much let's do you love art? <laughs> yeah. How much do what you, are you love art? To sacrifice. How much of your dignity? <laughs> exactly. I just I I hate that aspect of art, and uh, I feel like we should move on before we stick on this image forever. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the picture. I'm laughing at the conversation. Okay. Because every time we get together, Lee and I go like this. <laughs> That's why we're friends. <laughs> At the end, we know that we can agree to disagree and that we'll just fight the next time we see each other, too. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Uh, three, two, one. Three. Solid three on that one. I think it's a solid shot. I, I can see this in my, um, a Christian bookstore <laughs> as like a fine art piece. With, with some sort of... Like a motivational poster? Yeah, yeah. But it would have, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, your faith as big as a mustard seed can move a mountain. I don't know what it would be, but some <laughs> some sort of biblical uh, quote here. I think that's very harsh on that piece. I, th I didn't think about that at all. I mean, like, sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm the probably not taking it heaven, as, you know, as uh, negatively as, as you are, but... I um, think, no, I think, uh, again, that would be a cool, like, now, imagine four of those, spring, summer, winter, fall, as a series. I think it's interesting. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I think that, again, is sort of a piece that, that would go in a minimal room. Doesn't have to be huge, kind of like an accent piece. Um, and could be commercially viable. I also think it could be artistically viable if someone put a camera in the same spot every day for a year and you know, photograph the process of this tree's life or something. I think it, it has potential. I do think but, on its own is an but shot. What it what this really is, I think, is just some quick Photoshop work. Like you I think? don't oh yeah, I don't think anything about this is real. I could see that being right after a fresh snowfall or something and the fog is clearing and the sun's coming up. That would be amazing. I think that'd be killer. That would That's be why amazing. I like this shot, yeah. Okay, so whoever took this shot, please respond in the comments. <laughs> I I gave this a solid thinking that this was just the most quickly thrown together like Photoshop thing. Oh, put some blue up top and like it's just going to be this white twig. If this is real, uh, that that's really cool. I, I, I do not believe that's possible. I do not think it's possible to not be able to see a horizon and see the, the sky that clearly. All right, we'll see. I'd love to know. All right, let's know in the comments. But I think it's a solid shot regardless. All right. <clears throat> what? What is this? All right. David's totally fired. He's totally fired. Uh, like, what am I rating this as? A photograph or fine art? What are you rating this as? Fine art? Yeah, it's a fine art critique the community, right? Yeah, but a one is a snapshot. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. So... I can't make this a, a snapshot because I think this is actually a pretty good looking like it's uh, a, it's event a, photography shot. It's a it's a cool shot. Uh but I'm thinking about the intention of the photographer. Did he photograph this with the intent of it being a fine art photograph? No. If we were on in a desert on a beach or something and there were no humans around and this was shot in a graphic interesting way and you put the confetti behind the girl and like the colors are really cool. I could see that being interesting fine art but with the stage and the cement and the guys in the background it doesn't work as a piece of fine art it feels more like a snapshot to me um i mean it's definitely a snapshot in the in the sense that it was taken relatively quickly but like say for example that he was a uh event photographer yeah maybe he shoots concerts for a living right wouldn't this have to be at least a three-star image at that point like it should be on your website for event photography Potentially. Okay. I mean, I don't know anything about event photography, but it could, I, mean, I think, no it, I think it's a cool. I think the like... colors are cool. I think the, the you know the action is cool. The yeah. liveliness of the photos. Yeah. Is great. But this is not fine art photography. Lorenzo snuck this in here, and somehow David fell for it. Let's move on. I'm ready. Three, two, one. So you said something earlier that that really struck a chord with me and it was about the uh like books the pages no no the simulated sorrow or something oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, say that the, again uh, i can't remember what i said it was like something like simulated sorrow in photographies is, is uh, i think it's it's cliche, cliche. yeah and and i think back to all the people who are like 
uh, ripping my heart out or like yeah. got the sword in my heart yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, no, I yeah. Think there is absolute um, necessity for capturing real heartache, sorrow, and struggle in photography. I've never been one who has been interested in the simulated sadness, as we say. Um, simulated. There you go. Yeah. Um, and I think, again, I, I can appreciate the thought and care and effort that has gone into the photograph, but as a fine art piece, I think it needs to, to be refined. I think this has been done, overdone by a lot of, uh, uh, shall we say, people new to photography who are trying to break into like a fine art sort of genre. It's you put a lonesome looking person who is most likely probably from a middle class background into an post-apocalyptic steampunk looking thing and we slap a fine art logo on it. It doesn't really work for me. Uh, if it was, and again, like I said, in documentary photography, even in art photography, there is a, a real necessity for capturing real sadness yes. in, in struggle in the world, but I, it has, this has never really appealed to me. Okay. Um, and I, I can agree with everything you've said, but I also want to try to rate this fairly and say maybe there are people who like simulated sorrow on their walls. Yeah. Um, for those people, let's say you just love this concept or whatever. I feel like it's just put together a little sloppily mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it feels kind of Photoshopped to me rather than real. Yeah. And I think the only thing that really needs to be done is just a, a shadow of him casted on that watch yeah. would would make a big difference to making this whole thing feel more believable to me. Because he's supposed to be leaning up against it, right? Yeah, well, and, and from a technical standpoint, I mean, it doesn't... I, I'm trying to be, like, both objective uh, and helpful. Uh, from a technical standpoint, I think it's pretty cool. I think the Photoshop work is good, decent, uh, at least. I, I mean, I think it could be sold a little bit better. Like, it feels like the light doesn't match perfectly uh it's pretty close like you said there could be some more shadow or something going on it feels like some of the smoke it almost looks like it was drawn with a photoshop brush rather than um captured and then composited in hmm. uh another i mean even if we if we built some fires out here and photographed them that that might have been a better effect but um beyond you know the concept and i, I think a lot of people are calling this conceptual photography now it's com almost like this dali and um, hmm. vision of photography that and I think it's the conceptual is what the genre is called um, I would like to see it sort of expanded beyond like I said the simulated sadness um, type of effect so next ready almost ready okay Three, two, one. <clears throat> you give it a three, I give it a two. I may have given this a three on F-stoppers. I wasn't really thinking of it as fine art there. Mm -hmm. I love the concept. I just feel like the compositing of this dude in here doesn't feel legitimate to me. And I don't know if it's the tone of him. I don't know if that, like, if he's jumping forward, his coat needs to be blowing backwards more. <laughs> I think, I think... I could almost be pushed into a four on this, depending on the series. I think this is humorous. Uh, and I think the compositing sort of adds to the effect um, of the, the... I don't want to say that the compositing is funny. I think the... To me, this outlines the struggle of, like, you know, corporate... America. Oh my God! It's almost like a Dilbert comic to me. Don't even go down this road. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be cliche. But obviously, the guy's not going to make it. He's going to get dunked in the water. Um, part of me, I think it's. Uh, oh, see, I don't know. I, I, I like didn't get humorous, that vibe. I, a humorous commentary on corporate America. Like, I think the top hat. Come on, everything together. Like, who who dresses like that? There's totally like a monopoly vibe going on. I think it's a pretty funny photo. So, um, that's the I'm thing. I'm interested to see if the photographer was trying to be funny intentionally or if I'm rooting way too far into it and they just wanted to illustrate this. Come on, who's going to wear a full business suit on a tugboat jumping across onto a pier? That's, that's the thing to me. It feels like this was put together very quickly. Like, oh, I've got this one shot and like I'm just going to add a photo of myself jumping and I'm going to turn <laughs> this in for some right. photo uh, Yeah class that I have in college or something. Yeah. Like, I did stuff like, like this when I was in college. The posing and everything just feels <clears throat> funny to me. Like, if they wanted to do it and, and have us take it seriously, they would have put him in fishing gear 
or and have like no. you know what I mean? See, I you know I do what I do know what you mean. I love this. I love that he's dressed like that. Yeah. It's working for me. It makes no sense, and therefore it's interesting. I'm just saying that a little bit more effort should have been in, been put into the posing of this model and the compositing of him in there because it's so close to being awesome. Like I could have given this a four or five star. Like, like awesome from a like a you know like a workplace commentary point of view or a humor point of view or a you know like the it's like everything. It's like yeah. it's like this is fine art. This is the lead image on some. Uh, huge magazine story about corporate America. Yeah, um, I can see this like in in the New Yorker or something. You exactly, know? Or, like, there, there's economist. so much potential, yeah. and I just keep going back to like, eh, the, the 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 lighting doesn't really match up on the guy, and so it just looks kind of fakey to me. Yeah, but I I I gave it a three on f stoppers, and I'm like, ah, I just want I want that guy to be a little but, bit better. And here's the interesting thing about art is like, if this accompanied an article about, you know shrinking wages or something and not being able to pay rent even though you have a corporate job that could be an amazing a, a, an amazing illustration of that you yeah, know what I mean so yes, context is but, also very but important but I want I want the composite to be a little bit better okay, like won't you agree with me on that I keep repeating myself and then you keep no, saying other I, things I say you're right Lee for once I agree <laughs> with you I, I don't think the compositing needs to be better I think that it's uh it's an imperfect, like some of the most famous pieces of art are not perfect. You know what I mean? Unless you're thinking about like Vermeer. That was amazing because he was perfect. Um, but I think it's almost more collage-like in its approach rather than trying to be photographically perfect. Okay, whoever took this. Chime in. Chime in in the comments <laughs> and let us know if you wanted it to look fake and collage-like or you wanted it to look real because... I'm not. I'm not saying it has. It has to be real. Like I don't think that it can possibly be real because no person could jump that far yeah. off that boat. So like, <laughs> it's already unbelievable. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I. I'm I could with go to you a on four, that. Depending on context here too. And if the guy, if uh, sorry, if the guy or girl chimes in uh, and says this was intended to be an illustration for an article or for a book or for a commentary I was trying to make, I I could really love that. Uh, if it was trying to be a standalone photo, I'm still down in the three zone for me. But you still want they the could have worked a little bit harder on the lighting on the guy now, to like get it to match. If this was a mixed media piece and they cut out a magazine, a boat from a magazine, would you still say the same thing? Like, they, oh, this is clearly they cut out media. a boat from a magazine. Say they cut out a picture of a boat from a magazine and cut out a, a guy from another magazine and cut out like some cartoony things in the background, and it was a mixed media photograph. Would you still say that compositing sucks? It has to be better. No, of course not. Okay. So no. maybe. Yeah, so I'm curious to see. All right. Whoever took this, you chime in. Let us know who's right, who's wrong. Ooh. The action sports in me is coming out to the surface. Okay. So what people watching may not know i was a judge last year for the red bull Illum contest yeah and you think that's really cool because in the red bull Illum contest that would have been a killer photo it would be a killer photo however that was one of the hardest judging jobs i've ever had every picture was unbelievable yeah. and you're looking at it like how can this be real and then you flip it over and there'd be another one how can this be real yeah. and there's like 200 i had to go through yeah so um uh, i think i'm ready all right Three, two, one, three. We agree. Um, you I know. think it's a fantastic photograph for an action sports, for a magazine, for a, uh, a website, for a, an advertisement, for a bike company. Uh, who's the Scottish um, trials bike rider? The Red Bull guy who's always doing crazy stunts. It reminds me of him, Colin Caskill. Um, but as a fine art photograph, I don't know. But I do know it's a killer action sports photograph. Yeah, I don't know about fine art either. Although I would say most of the Red Bull Illum stuff, I would borderline say borderline fine art. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's gorgeous stuff. Now, you take the little bitty guy on the bike out of this shot, and then what do you say about this shot now? I say it's a two. I mean, I might not even say that. I might say a one at that point. But you know, again, like humanity <laughs> makes it ele it can, humanity can elevate photos from snapshot to art with the right, the perfectly placed human or a, 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 an emotion captured in the right way, so. Yeah, yeah, so 
cool shot. I mean, okay, here, here's another question, though. Yeah. What if that guy's composited in, just like the last shot? What if this is fake? It bums me out. So I learned something, like, years ago when we first started F-Stoppers, we did a tutorial with Dave Lail, who's now, like, killing it with sports photography, but he was a snowboard photographer. And he showed us his favorite shot that had never been published of this guy, like, jumping over this mountain. And uh, he explained to us that every picture in a magazine of somebody like on a skateboard or I don't know about surfboard or like a wakeboard, snowboard, yep. every picture you see of them flying through the air, they had to land that trick. Yeah, otherwise you can't run it. Mike used to be a professional snowboarder, so you knew this. This sounded insane to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? We just put the best shot in there. Surely yeah. <laughs> they can land something, yeah, right? Yeah. They don't need to land that one shot. We probably yeah. took 5,000 shots that day. No, man, you only put the shots that the guy land. Yeah. I'm like, what? That was the craziest thing That's I'd ever heard. Kind of like a code of ethics in, in action sports <clears throat> photography, you know? Right. And Which is interesting because, like, in Sports Illustrated, they don't care if the guy fumbles the ball or not. They're going to run the, the photo, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's kind of one of these situations here where, like, if you composited that guy in there, that's, like, the biggest sin yeah. within the sports world ever. Right. But then, I mean, I guess he's not necessarily doing some trick he has to land. There's totally, like, an element of photojournalism in it. Photojournalism, where they want the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I, I guess. I guess. It's very interesting. But that wraps it up. We have made it to the end. That is the end? All, All right. 21 images, including your one-star shot. <laughs> um, My amateur uh, snapshot from a drone. <laughs> Oh, that brought me a lot of joy. I, I just love sitting here watching you sweat. As I, I was just, not sweating. I was like, here, bring it on. Dude, I, 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 I saw that smirk on your face in the beginning. I was like, oh, <laughs> he's, he's ready for me to rate it highly. And then I just, and I then just you threw the one started start chopping you down and down and down and down. But uh, I thought I had a good, I was fair to it, right? I no, you were fair. very fair to it. And I, I, think, I think people at home would probably uh, agree with both of us as well on that one. Guys, if you'd like to be part of the next critique, Make sure you check out the link that's in this YouTube video or within this post on F-Stoppers that will link you to the next post where you can uh, add all the pictures that you want of product photography. And uh, head over to fstoppers.com for daily content just like this. And head over to fstoppers.com slash store to check out all of our tutorials, including our three tutorials with Michael Kelly. <laughs> Thanks for watching.